I understand that uh, and support fully uh, the freedom to choose you know, whether you want to get vaccinated or not. And uh, I have not uh, spoken about this before and I have not disclosed my medical record uh, and my vaccination status because uh, I, I had the right to keep that private and discreet. I understand the consequences of my decision. And one of the consequences of my decision was not going to Australia and I was prepared not to go. And I understand that not being vaccinated today, I, you know, I'm unable to travel to most of the tournaments at the moment. And, and that's the price you're willing to pay? I, that, that is the price that I'm and willing to pay. I understand that globally, everyone is trying to put a big effort into handling this virus and, and seeing a, hopefully a, a, an end soon to this virus. And vaccination is probably the biggest effort that was made, probably half of the planet was, was vaccinated. And I fully respect that, but I've always, uh, represented and, and always supported uh, the freedom to choose what you put into your body. A patient in the U.S. is the first woman to be cured of HIV, as well as the third person ever cured of the virus. That's according to research presented at a medical conference on Tuesday. Sharon Lewin is the head of the International AIDS Society. It is exciting for the field because it's proof that a cure is possible for HIV. The patient is a middle-aged mixed-race woman who got treatment to tackle acute myeloid leukemia, a cancer that starts in the bone marrow. For that, she received a stem cell transplant. However, the donor was naturally resistant to the virus that causes AIDS. And since then, her HIV has been in remission for over a year without the need for antiretroviral therapy. She was also the first to be treated using umbilical cord blood, a newer approach that may be more accessible to a wider range of patients. Lewin, however, remains hesitant. We always are a bit cautious in this setting because this kind of intervention, a bone marrow transplant, would not be appropriate for people living with HIV. This woman received a bone marrow transplant because she also had a blood cancer that needed to be treated. The case is part of a larger study following 25 people with HIV and cancer treated with an umbilical cord stem cell transplant study suggests that an important element is the transplantation of HIV-resistant cells. The two prior cases of males cured of HIV also used stem cells. Honduran police detained the country's former president on Tuesday. Juan Orlando Hernandez was led away in handcuffs and chains from his home in the capital Tegucigalpa. It follows a U.S. extradition request, with Hernandez wanted on drug and weapons charges. His detention marks a dramatic fall from grace only weeks after he left power. Video of his arrest was broadcast live on national TV as he was taken away to a base nearby for police special forces. Honduran Security Minister Ramon Sabillon supported the arrest. A U.S. embassy document seen by Reuters on Tuesday showed that U.S. authorities charged Hernandez with participating in a drug trafficking scheme between 2004 and 2022. The document alleged that Hernandez was part of an operation to receive tons of cocaine from Colombia and Venezuela, which were to be shipped onwards to the U.S. Washington's request for extradition was in stark contrast to a period when the U.S. government saw Hernandez as a vital ally in volatile Central America during his eight years in power. In the early hours of Tuesday, Hernandez posted a message on Twitter saying he had informed the police that he was ready to collaborate. His lawyer alleged his rights had been trampled on as he had immunity as a member of a regional congress. The U.S. State Department said its policy is not to comment on extradition requests. For the first time, a gunmaker has agreed to a major settlement over a mass shooting in the United States. Remington Arms will pay $73 million to the families of four adults and five children killed in the Sandy Hook Elementary School massacre, the family said on Tuesday. Attorney Josh Koskoff hailed the settlement. But this case was never about damages in the sense of compensation. It, it was about damages in the sense of forcing change. Gunman Adam Lanzo on December 14, 2012, killed 20 students and six adults using a Remington Bushmaster AR-15 rifle 
to shoot his way into Sandy Hook Elementary School after killing his mother at home. Veronique De La Rosa's son Noah was among those killed in the shooting. Today marks an inflection point when our duty of care to our children as a society finally supersedes the bottom line of an industry that made such an atrocity as Sandy Hook possible to begin with. The nine families sued in 2014 and spent years in the courts trying to hold Remington liable. Despite a U.S. law that protects gun makers and dealers from most civil litigation and two bankruptcy filings by Remington, the Sandy Hook families found a way around that legal protection for gun makers by claiming that Remington's marketing of firearms contributed to the massacre. In about 2005, roughly when this was all brewing, there were about 100,000 AR-15s sold uh, in America. In 2012, the year of the Sandy Hook, there were over 2 million. The settlement with Remington comes as the United States continues to be marred by mass shootings and gun violence. New York last year enacted a law that allows firearm sellers, manufacturers, and distributors to be sued for creating a public nuisance that endangers the public's safety and health. Gun manufacturers have challenged the law in court. The U.S. has suspended avocado imports from Mexico, leaving many restaurants scrambling to fill their orders. Piero Sanchez manages Baja Cantina in Los Angeles, where he says supplies may run out in two to three days. So it's super concerning, uh, the fact of the matter that the restaurant industry, you know, we've been walloped with prices on everything. So the fact of the matter that there's now another thing that's going to affect us is it, just, it, it's just nonstop. The incoming avocado scarcity is coming after an announcement by the U.S. Department of Agriculture on Monday. It said it would block imports after employees were verbally threatened in Mexico's western Michoacan state. The details of the incident weren't immediately clear, but Michoacan, which is Mexico's top avocado producing state and the only one certified to export to the U.S., has long dealt with security issues linked to drug gangs. That marks another source of trade tension between Washington and Mexico City and spells trouble for restaurant owners like Sanchez, who have grappled with pandemic restrictions and supply chain issues for the past two years. You know, Baja Cantina, we, we specialize on freshness on our food. So, you know, avocados, we want to make sure we have enough to get us by. Realistically, we have enough for about two to three days until we start seeing our pricing infl uh, kind of change. So for us, you know, we'll find a viable solution. We'll find a substitute, or even that, if we need to take a little bit of a hit, we'll take it. But uh, we're hoping this crisis or this situation ends very soon. We can get more supply out here and give, give the restaurants a break. The USDA says any crops which have been safety approved before February 11th could still be exported. Mm -hmm.